welcome to ikeda in this lecture we will be discussing the properties of y bus and z bus matrix while carrying out the different studies on the power system we use we make use of these two buses y bus and z bus it is important to know that which bus is useful to carry out what type of studies so let us try to understand what type of buses will be useful to carry out which type of studies so let us begin that so in the power system carry out different studies we got two different buses we have the bus admittance matrix and of course we have the bus impedance matrix okay so first we'll see which bus matrix is useful to carry out what type of studies generally we prefer y bus matrix for load flow studies and this impedance matrix or the bus impedance matrix we prefer this for fault analysis or what i can call that fault calculations prefer this z bus matrix now we have discussed the network model formulation and the conclusion of that it was a given power system we can model that we can mod we can model a given power system into this simple equation what was this equation i bus is equal to y bus into v bus but this equation is similar to this equation v bus is equal to z bus into i bus both the equations are same so from these two equations we can say that z bus is nothing but inverse of y bus it is nothing but inverse of the y bus now we'll see okay so this y bus these two equations both are nothing but same so from this we can say that y bus or this z bus both are related to each other in this manner z bus is the inverse of or we can what i can say y bus is nothing but inverse of the z bus okay inverse of the z bus will give me the y bus now the question arises that i uh, have noted here particularly we are using y bus for load flow study and z bus particularly for fault analysis if both are related with the simple relationship then why we are differing on this point the reasons are the y bus is a sparse matrix it is sparse in nature sparse means there will be more terms in the y bus which will be zero or what what, what i can say sparse matrix it means zero terms will be more in that matrix you will find number of terms in that y bus as zero that is why 
I'm calling that as Y bus is a sparse matrix. What about the Z bus? It is a full matrix. Hardly you will find a zero element in Z bus, but definitely you will find many element or many zero element in the Y bus. That's the first point. So if you see here, if I make a use of sparse matrix, because load flow study is a very complex part, it involves no, lots of lots of calculation. Okay, now while carrying out the, these lots of calculation, if you come across the zero terms, if you come across the zero terms, definitely it will reduce the calculations. Again, it will help me to reduce the storage requirement. Whereas if I go for the Z bus matrix for the load flow study, of course, I need to solve for all the elements and the storage requirement will also increase. This is the first point. That is why we are going for the load flow study. Uh, we are using the Y bus matrix. Second thing, it can be easily modified. easy modification okay easy modification in the sense suppose between the two buses or between the two nodes in the power system a link is connected a transmission line is connected if i remove that transmission line if i modify my power system then Similar modification in the Y bus matrix will be very easy. Just you make the admittance of that path as zero. That's it. This is how simple modification or this is how easy it is to modify the Y bus. But if you if the same is the case, then you need some algorithm to modify the Z bus. Needs algorithm for modification okay one more important thing it can be it can easily be formulated or it can easily be calculated okay calculations or let me write it particularly can be calculated easily in the last lecture only i have given you the method to write the y bus matrix if it is a diagonal element We'll write for suppose for y11 we have written that we have taken the summation of all the admittances or we have taken the summation of admittances of all the branches connected to that bus this is how it's simple to write for diagonal element and for off diagonal element it was simply negative of the admittance connected between two buses this is how simple it is and this is how easy it is to calculate but if you want to calculate the z bus matrix you need inversion you need inversion as well as you sometimes you need algorithms inversions and or algorithms are required 
are required to calculate the Z bus matrix. Okay, so this is the reason why we prefer Y bus matrix over Z bus matrix. What are the basic reasons? It is a sparse matrix, we'll get more zero terms resulting in less number of calculations resulting in uh, storage requirement reduction it can be modified easily y bus matrix it can be formed it can be calculated easily whereas z bus matrix it is a full matrix needs algorithm for modification of course it will need inversion inversion y because if you have a y bus and if you want to calculate the z bus you need to invert this y bus okay uh, i can write this as z bus if you want to calculate the z bus either you need to invert the y bus or you need to take the help of algorithms to calculate the z bus matrix Okay, here then you may think that Y bus is having all the positives as compared to the Z bus, then why we are still preferring Z bus for fault analysis? See, in fault analysis, bus ordering is very important in the fault analysis bus ordering is very important suppose the fault is occurring on the 10th bus then if those buses are ordered then we can I can directly go to the that bus number 10 and I can do this analysis and I can find out the fault current at that bus so if you want to have the proper ordering of the buses then in that case you must go for this Z bus only because it follows the ordering of the buses. Okay, that is why it is helpful in fault analysis as compared to the load flow study. In the load flow study, here also, in some cases, we need bus ordering. Okay, there are certain cases, if we order the buses precisely, then we, we will take it will take less steps or it will take less calculations to solve this load flow problem okay but still these are the two uh, these are the main basic reasons why we go for the y bus matrix for the load flow study and we go for the z bus matrix for the fault analysis so these are the important properties of the Y bus and the Z bus matrix. Thank you very much.